how do I switch it to like actually go? Over on the right here. Oh. Or left side. Game, no cam. And then we're all good to go. We just started right now. Then you can? Back to Thank you, Colin. Hello everybody, my name is Alex Valencia. I'm a student success librarian here at NC State. We're gonna play some Mario Kart today and I'm gonna talk a little bit about some cool things going on in the library this semester. There's gonna be a friend code in the chat if you'd like to join in and play with us. Um, oh, it'll be in the chat a bunch. Hey Claire. Thanks for joining us today. Well, I'm in the new Twitch studio that we have in the library. It's very cool. Um, so you're gonna see a lot of really great content coming out of here over the semester and on into 2022. So looking forward to being with you today. Let me go ahead and show you all the friend code. I forgot how hard it is to play video games and speak at the same time, so bear with me if I trail off into no man's land. SW57659288-5295. If you're not my friend already, go ahead and add that code in there, and we will be friends, and we can all play Mario Kart together. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to play a little bit and get us started. I hope all of you are doing well after the nice three-day weekend. Hopefully this fall weather starts kicking in soon. I do love the fall time, fall, spring, summer. Even winter is okay, but in terms of this area, definitely like the fall time for sure. Looking forward to getting out on some of the trails and the rivers, Eno River out in Durham. One of my favorite places to go and enjoy the outside while we can. Yes, fall fall's definitely the best. Go ahead and put your favorite favorite uh, season into the chat. I think out here fall falls beautiful with all the greenery and all the turning leaves, it's hard to beat. I'm super excited to play some Mario Kart. It's been a long time. And yes, if you have your Switch, feel free to join us so we can all get a nice group going. If not, don't worry. Sit back, relax, enjoy the stream. Root for me or root against me. Either way, I will be having fun and I will hopefully be getting some points um, onto our profile so we can get up to where the really good people are. But yeah, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, no problem. Just got to go up against Germany and Japan, all the folks that are enjoying their evening right now. Also, this is definitely my main character, Shy Guy, with the black Shy Guy outfit, and the classic book card. If you have a main, go ahead and put that in the chat. And if it's not for Mario Kart, maybe put in your Super Smash Bros. name. That's always fun, too. We should definitely get a Super Smash Brothers coming to the We've got some really great programs going on in the library this semester. A lot of workshops. We are back into the swing of things. Um, we're being as safe as possible and following the Protect the Pack guidelines. But I just want to let you know that we are open. Um, so please come and check us out. Check out some of the programs we got coming up. There's a lot of making space events. There's going to be some DJ workshops. There's going to be a lot of music. There's going to be a lot of speakers. And to find out all of that info, you can just go to our website, live.ncsu.edu. And on the right side of the screen, you can see all of our upcoming events. We're going to be doing some documentary screenings, some AV Geeks. It's going to be really, really cool. We're so happy to have you back. Last year, just felt odd not having a lot of people in the library. It's only been a couple of weeks, but it feels so much better to see people studying, to see people 
and learning from it, working on their projects, working in groups. Uh, it's definitely a lot more inspiring. Pretty much that's good. And on that note, the libraries are open 24 hours a day, 5 days a week. On Friday and Saturday, we close at 10 p.m. On the other days, even Sunday, you can come in at any time of the day or night. We just ask that after 10 p.m. you bring your student ID so you can scan yourself in. Uh, other than that, you are all set to go. The Ask Us desk is at your availability. You can see where you can get help on that link that uh, we can share in the chat. And that's where you can get help on anything, from asking about textbooks, asking about resources, asking about scholarly resources, anything to use in your paper. Hey, third, that's not bad. I haven't been playing in a while. Um, you can check out chargers, laptops, all a bunch of cool stuff. Some of our tech is for, yes, it is really nice to see the library full. I love just seeing, like, walking by and seeing people work on their projects. Let's see, where are we going next? You can also bring food into the library at the moment, which is really nice. The coffee shop is open as well, so you can get some ice cream, some coffee, little sandwiches, some water, in case you get hungry while you're studying. I always get way hungrier when I'm putting in work into some of my projects than if I'm just like sitting down playing Nintendo Switch like I am today. Something about using that, all that brain power builds up the appetite. Not quite like swimming. Swimming swimming in the ocean or swimming in the pool, that's when you get the hungriest. And those sandwiches in the summer, a little bit of chips on the side, that's some of the best, the best in the world, for sure. Yeah, sipping on some tea, some iced coffee, or a hot coffee, eating a little snack while you study. Yeah, keep the hands busy. It's hard to get in the at the same time. I, mean, I, I imagine some people are so good at fishing they can get in and keep the conversation going on the crowd. But I haven't had enough time to play video games and speak. Ah! For those of you who might not know, we have two. I guess you'd call them main libraries on campus. It's the Hunt Library over on Centennial and the E.H. Hill Library here on Hillsborough Street. These are the ones that are open 24 5. Um, if you haven't made it over to Hunt yet, I definitely recommend it. It's uh, really beautiful on the outside and inside, really great design. There's a lot of open areas because we have a book bot, so there's not a lot of space for the table by books. If you do need a book, then you just put the request in online, the book bot will grab it, and then you can pick it up at the Ask Us desk in about 10 to 15 minutes. They'll let you know as soon as it's ready, you just come up and grab it. I just spent as much time there recently just because everything's been going on with World Cup Welcome League and just a lot of undergrads being over here, but I'm definitely going to try to get over there with Liberty. A lot of great study spaces. There's a terrace where you can see over the road. And then we also have libraries specifically for vet medicine, natural resources, and the College of Design. You don't have to be in those colleges. Everybody's welcome to go to those libraries. It's just the materials are going to be a little more specific to those spaces. They, those libraries also have the They're not open 24 hours, so just check our website and Yes, let me turn down the volume of the game. That's a little bit. Sorry about that. 
Alright, let me know if that sounds better. Ooh, which one? Wild Woods, Mean City, or Yoshiba? This one. Does that sound better? Yoshi Valley. This one was so confusing when I got Mario Kart 8 for the first time. I didn't know where to go. There's probably a faster way, but I love going on this little bridge just because it's crazy. Ah! Especially in the beginning. There's definitely some ways that are way slower too though. Sometimes you try to take the can I took the cannon one time and I went from like second to ninth. It was terrible. Everybody always seems to pick the heavier characters. And I'm sure there's a reason behind it, but it just seems more fun to pick the characters you like. And I'm in first place. Uh first second, split second. You saw it. Getting hit by the boomerang is one of the most, one of my bigger pet peeves, because you can't see it coming. Ah. It just attacks you out of nowhere. At least the red shell, you can kind of like sense it. Blue shell, you can sense it. Green shell, you can hear it. But the boomerang just comes out of nowhere. Yeah, definitely check out the Vet Med uh, College of Design Library and the Natural Resources Library. They might be a little less crowded if that's what you're looking for. And definitely spend some time exploring both of the main libraries. There's so many just really cool spaces and activities that you can do aside from studying. Of course, we have individual and group study rooms where you can get a lot of your work done, connect to HDMI cables, uh, to screen so you can practice presentations. Uh, those rooms are reservable on our website under the study and learn tab on our homepage, lib.ncsu.edu. Sorry, let me hit this turn real quick. <laughs> but yeah, aside from study rooms and stacks and nice desks where you can get a lot of your work done, we also have some really, really cool rooms like our maker space where you can learn how to 3D print or do vinyl cutting and make your own stickers. You can do embroidery and none of this stuff you have to know. You can take workshops. We have great staff in there that will help point you in the right direction. Um, a lot of the materials are affordable. We're not charging for plastic filament or the vinyl this year. So definitely come by and check that out. There's going to be, in my opinion, there's so many jobs in going to be so many so much possibility with 3d printing and being able to use these tools even embroidery just learning how to play around with the programs and adding them to your repertoire adding them to your resume as extra skills yes free 3d printing and I it's been such a joy working at the ask us desk and seeing people come up to print up their prints there's been so many already and it was such a bummer not to have that space open last year, but we won't talk about the past because they're open and even cheaper and more affordable now. So definitely come by and check out that space. In order to use it, you do need to take an orientation, but it's really easy this these days because you can do it totally online. And I recommend anybody to just do the orientation, do it, 
and then that way you don't have to do it for the rest of your time here at NC State. You can come in and use the space at your leisure. And they'll just go over some of the safety protocols, how to use the room, um, community guidelines, some of the aspects of the room that you can use that I don't know about, and they'll point you in the right direction. So whether you're in engineering or not, definitely check it out. Yeah, you can do D&D figure um, printing. You can have Pokemon. I just saw Colin was showing me, who works at the uh, Makerspace sometimes, was showing me a blue shell from Mario Kart that was printed in the lab. And you can even print other people's designs if you just want to start and you don't want to create your own. There's a bunch of free designs that people put online that you can print and kind of learn how the machine works, what it's capable of, and how you want to use it in the future. Some engineering classes might have a project specifically for 3D printing that you'll use in your class, so it's good to get familiar with it if you're in that program. But even if you're not, if you just want to come and check it out, definitely, definitely recommend it. I just watched this uh, streetwear reality show on HBO Max called The Hype, I think, where they had a bunch of young designers competing against each other, and some of the judges were people who are big in the industry, like Offset, they had Cardi B in one of the episodes, and it was just really cool to see these um, young designers cut and sew and embroider new designs into their, the, their ideas and their clothes, so it's something I definitely want to play around with at some point this semester, is learning how to use the embroidery machines. The cool thing about talking is you don't really focus on, you don't like worry too much about the race, you kind of just do it in the back of your mind. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's less stressful. Yeah, one of the things that bums us out is when students are seniors or on their last semester here and then they start using the makerspace or using some of our resources. They're like, wow, I never knew that we had this or had access to this. I wish I knew about it sooner. So even if you're just slightly intrigued, uh, definitely come down and talk to some folks, get to know some of the people there. I think a lot of the people who are consistently in the making space build like a, a nice relationship with the workers there, with the staff, with the other people that are consistently using the space as well. So it's a great place to build community and just see what other people are working on. Woo! Six ways. Eh, middle of the path. I'm trying to talk without thinking. Just flow like water. Don't think, just do. But it's very difficult. And to play Mario Kart. Maybe this is good training. commend those who have individual podcasts where they it's just them and the microphone for anything longer than an hour. It is not easy to keep the cadence up, to keep the flow of conversation. But definitely a good skill to have, especially these days. And speaking of podcasts and podcasting, look at this segue. We have a digital media lab that is open now at the DHL Junior Library. You'll notice a submarine porthole that goes into the room, or you'll, you can find it by the very bright green walls that lead you to it. There are students staffed over there that can help you with some of the programs. And some of the programs that I'm talking about are Adobe Illustrator, InDesign, Lightworks, um, you have Photoshop. All the creative softwares that you might want are on the computers in that room. And similar to the Makerspace, if you don't want to know how to use those programs but aren't really familiar with them, you can get some help. You can always set up a tech consultation on our website and we can pair you with an expert. There are really great music making or sound making studios in the back as well. Unfortunately, those aren't quite open yet because of the pandemic. But those are there, just know that those are there for when they do open and we'll let you all know as soon as they do. But in those spaces, there's a green screen, there's a HD video camera, so you can learn how to do some video editing projects. There's also 
microphones, record players if you want to learn how to sample. And those computers in the back, they'll have all your sound making studio equipment like Ableton, Logic, Pro Tools, all the really expensive stuff um, is right there. And like I said, you can learn how to use it on your own or you can team up with an expert for an hour. They can help you and then maybe a couple weeks later when you get ready to move on to the next level, you can set up another one and they can help you in that area. We have a lot of great student staff, uh, library faculty and staff working and can help you out in those spaces. I think when I started about three years ago, I would ask English 101 classes if they had ever heard of podcasting. And about a quarter to a third of the class would raise their hand. Most of them were listening to like murder mystery podcasts, which is always fascinating. Um, but then as the years would go on, just like last year, I asked the same class, same English 101 class, and now it would be more than half. Half of the students would either listen to the podcast in the regular, at least have an idea of what they were, some of their favorite ones, uh, definitely a wider range of podcasts that people were listening to. So if you've ever been interested in starting a podcast or seeing what goes into editing a podcast, um, that's something that you can do in those spaces as well. Yeah, something about Murder Mystery Podcast and the series ones, they, they're they super popular. Ooh, you found one that talks about new mobile games every week. That's awesome. I gotta team you up with a professor in communications who does a lot of work on mobile games from before Pokemon Go to after Pokemon Go. And that's like where she does a lot of her research. I like to have a nice balance of podcasts in my in my library. Some that are motivating when I'm in that mode. Some that are just like silly when I just want to relax and not think about anything. Some in some areas that I like to do research on. Yeah, just a wide plethora and always trying to find some new ones. Yes. Remind me to send you an email so that I can put you in contact with her because she's great. This is one of my lesser favorite tracks. It's very strange. Mario Kart 8 originally came out on the Nintendo Wii, Wii U, and it was just such a great game. Even the add-ons that they added for the Switch, it's pretty much the same as what it was for the Wii U, but even after all these years, it's still just a classic. The maps, the attention to detail, the characters, it's an overall great game. I do hope they come out with Mario Kart 9 soon, though. I think one of my favorite Mario Karts was Double Dash for the GameCube. You play with your little brother, play against your little brother, or sister. And it's amazing because back then when that game came out, it was like, these graphics are amazing. I can't believe they made a game like this. And then just when I home ever many years later, it's like, look how detailed this is. And it's only going to get better. So close.
Yeah, I don't know a lot about computing and gaming, but one thing that's been really interesting to me is how other technologies are using computer chips. Like, a lot of cars are using NVIDIA chips for processing like what's going on on the screen in their own computers. And how I was talking to one of our colleagues, Lara, who's a gamer, and she was telling me that it's really hard to get an NVIDIA chip at the moment, whereas it used to be pretty reliable at Best Buy or any electronic store. But there's such a back order on them right now that not only are they hard to find at the computer store, the electronic store, they're also causing delays in cars to be produced and other technologies to be produced. And it's just amazing that these chip companies like NVIDIA, AMD, are creating these devices that are going into so many different technologies these days. And I guess they started it just being able to make video games play better, have a clearer picture, better frame rate. It's pretty incredible. Let's see. If you're just joining us, thank you. Uh, we're just playing Mario Kart. I'm a student success librarian, and I'm going to be talking about some cool things going on in the libraries this semester. If you would like to join us, our friend code will be in the chat, and I can add you and we can play Mario Kart together. But if not, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Speaking of computer chips, uh, we also have a virtual reality room in the libraries. It's on the second floor in the east wing, kind of close to the auditorium where a lot of classes are. And once you find it, it is a really amazing spot that we have here in the library, a really great space, again, staffed with some amazing students and faculty and staff. And in there you can play a lot of the Oculus games, you can develop games, you can take workshops, you can find other people who are into virtual reality. And if you've never tried it before, I definitely recommend it. It's kind of similar to 3D printing, where it's, it's not going anywhere. There's going to be a lot of really cool applications and jobs. Because it's not just gaming, right? It's design, it's architecture, engineering, it's sales. If you're trying to sell a car, especially these days during a pandemic, you can give someone the experience of being inside of that car, of what it feels like, or maybe not what it feels like, but what it looks like, and give them kind of a peripheral idea of what it would be like to drive that car, um, selling the house, selling some furniture, testing out furniture to see if it would fit in your house. There's just so many different applications that VR is has the potential to grow into. And it's something that I'm really looking forward to, especially as devices become kind of more affordable and more into popular culture, because they are kind of out of reach for a lot of just um, regular casual fans at the moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, since a lot of people don't have it or have the space to do it, come on down to the libraries and you can play with ours. We have a great Steam collection on all of our computers in there, so you can play a lot of the games that have been really popular, like Beat Saber. We also have a Mario Kart AR game, uh, if you're enjoying this Mario Kart stream, where you actually get to drive your own little go-kart around a room, create your own tracks. Uh, Lara and I played it last week. She's our student uh, success librarian, or was. She's moving into a new role at the moment, but it was lots of fun. Uh, so definitely go and check that out. And similar to the Makerspace and DML, you take a little orientation and then they show you how to use the space, um, give you a rundown on some of the hours when the space is open, what it can be used for, and then you are all set to go. One of the fascinating things I learned about VR is they're using it in medical school. And so you'll have the VR application open, and say you're practicing for a surgery, they'll have like dolls, medical dolls, that you can practice and be in VR to get as like close to the real thing as possible. And they found that students who were practicing on VR with the doll were so much more prepared when they went out into their jobs and, and did it for the first time. Couldn't have sold the VR studio my better myself. Thank you. Yeah, 
it, it's it's pretty incredible. I, I never really played around with it until I got here, and I was just blown away about at how immersive it is. Um, a lot of people are worried about if you get motion sickness. The great thing about that is you can just take off the screen if it is causing you some dizziness at any time. So it's definitely not something that should prevent you from coming and trying it out. I think it works if you have glasses, if you have contacts, you should be totally fine. Um, and we're, you know, we're following all the protocols and keeping those devices safe and clean and sanitized. So the three spaces that I've talked so far are the Makerspace, Digital Media Lab, and the Virtual Reality Room. Definitely, definitely check out those spaces at some time at some point this semester. Three, two, one. Ooh. Oh, you knew that was working. All right, I'm gonna focus on this race and see how good. Didn't have the best start, but it can only go up from here. Yeah, like I was saying, the VR studio is not just for games. However, the games in there are pretty incredible. So if you're into gaming and you haven't played VR games, I think you'll be pretty pleased at the way, at how it feels. Ooh, no fair. Leon. I'm still amazed that we get to play these video games with people around the world. I grew up playing most of my video games in the 90s and early 2000s and while you could play like Halo online or with your friends it wasn't like this it wasn't as seamless as this like this was everything we could have dreamed of as a kid and we just have it right here at our fingertips ah! I should have done better with the bullet Spain. Yeah, multiplayer games have gotten so good that some games don't even have like a story mode anymore, a single player mode. It's just get the game or download it for free and go straight to the Battle Royale online where you can play with hundreds of players. It's wild. I still haven't played Fall Guys, but I really want to. That's a game we should get for the PS4. Stream that. I said I would focus on this race, and I'm over here struggling in 10. What is this? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. More games are geared towards multiplayer or internet based rather than having like a single story mode. I wonder where it's going to go next. Probably something new with VR. Uh, another interesting thing I learned about VR recently is that Facebook, who owns Oculus, one of the major platforms of virtual reality, is coming out with a new kind of like group meet platform. Uh, so instead of Zoom where you're looking at everybody in the classroom on small squares, you'll put on a headset and it'll put you into a virtual like boardroom or classroom with your avatar as you and you can talk to people right across from you in real time. And I just saw some commercials about this so I'm sure it'll take a while before it's readily available and accessible to people. But it'll be really interesting to see how that affects school, how that affects work, um, a lot of jobs obviously we're able to go work from home over the last year and it seemed like some places had more productivity from the workers when they were able to work from home which makes sense if a lot of the stuff you're doing on is on the computer or sending emails or just small check-ins with people 
It does feel strange though not being able to talk to people and see people in, in person. That's one thing that I missed for sure. Reminds me of a project someone in my studio tried to make. Yeah, it seems like it seems like very practical, right? Having a VR game application where you could meet with other people. Yeah, I agree. Depends on age and length. Yeah, being in VR for maybe two hours or a three hour seminar, that might be a little disorienting. A little bit difficult. And if you're trying to strap a VR to someone in second grade, that might be a little difficult as well. Um, and then it's also back to accessibility. Are these things fairly accessible to folks who don't have strong internet connections, who don't want to pay for a really expensive headset? Are they going to have grants? Are they going to hook up classrooms and teachers? These are all questions that hopefully they're asking themselves over at Oculus while they're developing these programs. I know it was hard for us if you know whoever was hosting the meeting had a tough internet connection that day. It made it really hard to communicate with other folks. Um, so I imagine learning for six hours a day if you don't have a solid internet connection is really difficult. I'm about to laugh somebody. I'm gonna try to hold on to this first. If I get quiet, don't mind me. I haven't got first all day. I do really like this track. Speaking of season. No, no. No! Why? Who did this to me? Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, I forgot about what that did. Also, that person passed me, but I think they left. Struggling. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I love that this map changes seasons. Do this. Come on, give me something good. Give me something good. Hit this last turn. It's not gonna cut it, but that blue shell might. Hey, lucky, lucky. Yeah, baby Mario was getting lapped and making it causing a, a ruckus for everybody else. They could do a Death Star version, but does that defeat the purpose? Yeah, I don't know. I wonder. Maybe if you had a webcam and at least it placed you in a room. Because I think the hard thing about Zoom, especially in the classroom, is when a lot of people have their camera off or, you know, you're just staring. There's, like, a bunch of people in your class so you don't know who's speaking at what time. So maybe if they could put you into that, into that room and then the camera could move around a little bit. I'm not sure. Eye tracking seems to be a really big thing that companies are working on, but then you gotta worry about privacy. Just hope that these companies are being ethical, which is always, always a question. Yeah, welcome, thank you for joining us today. Uh, what do I want to talk about next? Ooh, so one of our new partners within the library is the Academic Success Center. It's on the second floor of the main, the main floors when you come up from the Brickyard entrance. And if you just turn around once you get up the stairs to the second floor, you will see them up there. And that's a really great partner that we're super happy to be with and super happy to have them here in the libraries. Because they are going to help you with tutoring, they're going to help you with finding a study group, they're going to help you with some of the more difficult classes that a lot of students go through, like physics, chem 101, statistics, they have tutors readily available so that they can help you with your papers. I think you can get some writing help in there as well. Like I said, they are called the Academic Success Center. If you type that into the Google Academic Success Center in CSU. You'll be able to find them, find their hours, and find some of the resources they offer. The study group that I was mentioning is super exciting because 
say you're in a class and you know you're going to have difficulty with it, but it's not a class where you get to do a lot of group work, so you don't really get to know your classmates, they, you can put in a notice that you'd like to find a study group for that class, and they'll pair you with other people who are also looking to have form a study group or get some extra help. Um, and that's a great way to meet people, a great way to meet people who may be in different colleges but taking that same class and people that you don't see in your classroom. They say that you remember more when you explain things to folks. So on a test, it's you remember the action of like remembering things or learning things with your friends rather than if you just read straight from the notebook or take notes or copy notes over and over and over again. For some folks, for the majority of folks. That's how it works. Not everybody. But yeah, depending on your learning style, you can find some help at the Academic Success Center on the second floor. I was trying to keep my crown in first place, but struggle. This is one of my favorite tracks. Sometimes you have those races where you just seem to hit Every red shell, every green shell, every banana, every lightning bolt. But you just gotta keep on going. Kind of like life. <laughs> Mario Kart. The perfect metaphor for life. Sometimes you'll be cruising along, you just get hit with a blue shell. Where's first place? I don't even see him. Hey, I'm not mad at that first and second. Yeah, why can't it with just confetti flying everywhere and waterfalls and fruit trees? I feel like this is what it looks like in certain places in France. Ooh, yeah. Zoom dysmorphia is wild because you're just staring at yourself the whole time while you're talking to other people. I know I'm guilty of that sometimes. Making sure my hair looks good and there's nothing on my shirt. And then you realize you haven't been paying attention for the last five minutes. And then it also like edits your features a little bit if you choose to. You can like soften some things. So you, if you go to different people's <laughs> rooms with different edits, you like look different in every photo and it can be a little taxing on the mental. So there's also stacks of books in the libraries. You can go up through the elevators behind the Ask Us desk and find some of the traditional um, library spaces, lots of books. You can find some older versions of your current textbooks that you might be able to find helpful. And those you can check out for a lot longer. I think the minimum is a month. You can always renew the books as well. So if you're in a class that has a new edition every year you can always go up to the stacks pick up the edition from like two years ago and take that home it's really helpful uh, I don't think I mentioned this but at the ask us desk you have we have we have one copy of every textbook that's required for for the classes and you can check them out for two hours two hours because you know we just have to have them accessible for all the students who need them but in that two hours, you can take them to the book scanners that we have in our reading commons, in our learning commons, and you can scan the chapters that you need, you can scan the, maybe the questions you need for homework, and then you can email it to yourself via PDF, which is really, a really nice feature. Um, if you know that your book's like, if you're waiting for your book and shipping, that could also be a good reason to come and use it. But for whatever reason, if you need access to your textbooks, we have them. Good way to save money as well. We just say that uh, they can get a little bit busy, especially for the more common classes that everyone's taking around midterm and finals time. So just be aware of that when you're coming into check.
We also have a great program with TRLN and through Library Lending. Library Lending, where you can get a book that even if we don't have it, we'll find a library that has it somewhere in the country and they'll ship it to us. And you can just come pick it up from DHO or Hunt Library when it is ready. This is a beautiful map as well. Sometimes I get distracted by the stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a popular reading collection just right by the reading, the learning commons. And that's where you can find some of the new novels, some of the more popular reading books that have come out recently as well. Abby, are you a book collector or are you a checkout from the library type person? Or is it a mixture of both? I was a really strong library user, but then I started collecting books and I liked the way you know my personal library was starting to look. And then I moved and had to lug all those books from my old spot to my new spot and it was literally just like moving weight, <laughs> like bags of sand around. Uh, so now I'm not really sure which route I want to go. I do like having collections of books. Oh, hey Megan, sorry, I thought it was Abby. Book collector, yeah, it's it's nice having a collection of books. I think I'd limit mine to the like the classics, the ones I know I'm going to go back to, the ones I reference, uh, not just the books that I find at the thrift store. I try to keep those moving. Megan checks out a textbook twice a week for class. Smart. We also have financial calculators, scientific calculators, graphing calculators. So if you need one for the day, if you forgot yours, or if you just need one for an assignment or a test, come down to the Ask Us desk and check one out. Um, again, the same thing goes applies for textbooks. Is they get busy on midterms and finals days, so just uh, make sure you get here early. Those you can check out for eight hours. Yeah, a, a good for to me a good book collection is like seventy percent books you've read and thirty percent books that you plan on getting to eventually. You keep like a nice mix. That way, if you finish a book and you don't have one that you're immediately going to, you have like a nice selection to pick from. One book that I recently got that I'm excited to read, um, I haven't opened it yet, is Dune. I know it's a classic, but I never read it and the movie's coming out. I try to separate books from movies just because you know you're always disappointed with one or the other so I figure if I read the book and then give myself some time to forget about some of the details and nuances and character details and then watch the movie which looks pretty incredible um, that's usually the way I like to go about it I found that I used to read books right before I watched the movie and then just be let down because you know my favorite character trait was left out due to time or whatever or editing choice and found that if I just waited a little bit to forget some of those nitty gritty details that I enjoyed it a lot more. It wasn't as hypercritical. Let's 
I'm trying to think. I think the the movies that I've been satisfied with, I would watch them first and then read the book. And then I guess, you know, the book would. I could kind of picture some of the characters from the movie into the book. Um, I know that when I was younger was when. Like Lord of the Rings movies were coming out, and I didn't really understand Lord of the Rings when I was young, trying to read the book. But then after watching the movies, it helped me picture like what in the world I was reading <laughs> and some of the, the different characters. So that's one where it, where it helped out watching the movie first. But yeah, most of the times it's a letdown. I'm still upset with the Dumbledore they replaced the first Dumbledore with in Harry Potter. Um, I know the first one passed away, rest in peace. But I was not pleased with the, the second one. The first time. He just wasn't as regal. And his beard and his hair was gray as, instead of white. Hunger Games and Catching Fire might have been all right. Did not enjoy Mockingjay as much. Yeah, I did. I did enjoy those movies as well. I think that's another one where I watched the movie before I read the book. Overshot. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, like I said earlier, we have individual and group study rooms. You can check those out in the study and learn tab on our homepage, lid.ncsu.edu. You can see what rooms are available. You can check them out for two hour windows. Um, I think you can go back to back, so maybe up to four hours a day. If you're with other people, maybe you could reserve the room and then they could reserve the room. Um, we just ask that you be respectful of other people who also might need the space at the same time. I have not read Ready Player One. I watched that at the movies and was like a little underwhelmed. And then I watched it afterwards and really thoroughly enjoyed it. So I'm not sure. Maybe I was with the wrong people on the first go around. But I have not read the book. I would like to. Would you recommend it? book is way better. Ooh, nice. I did like how the story was kind of like a video game. Like you had to find certain clues, you had to put the mystery together and all the pieces together. I did like that final battle scene with all the classic characters. Um, but I'll definitely check out the book. This is my favorite map. This one in Ribbon Road. Absolutely. Wonderful design. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to read the book. like to check out Ready Player One, our library has it. Squid! Squid! Is it still there? First, really good. Yeah. 
So good. That is not okay at all. Terrible. From second to ninth in the last section of the last lap. Doesn't get much worse than that. Um, also new in the libraries in this beautiful remodel is our data experience lab. That is also here at the Hill Library. I believe it's on the third floor. And that place similar to make space similar to VR so much growth in data collection and data an analysis there's going to be so many jobs because everything is data uh, going from second to ninth in the last section of Hyrule Castle that is data the amount of chats that's data the amount of people who are in this twitch stream that's data everything is data these days we are data uh, however long we scoot around on those bird scooters that is data um, so definitely lots of jobs in the data area. And you can learn how to use some of those programs and how to visualize a lot of that. Put those data points into visualization. In that studio, there's a lot of the programs that you use, like C++ and R, Python, and they can teach you how to do a lot of that. So definitely check out the programs in that area. I think a lot of our classes are using those programs as well. Everything is data. Mm, our data. <laughs> We're going to be doing a great stream in here on Friday at 2 o'clock. We're going to be playing B Simulator as part of our. Um, Our Wicked Problem series global that focuses on global change. And we're going to have a B expert in here actually as well. It's going to be called an iBuzz Buzz. So definitely check that out. 2 o'clock on Friday, this Friday, coming up, B Simulator. I have no idea how to play the game. I've never played the game. I'm assuming we're simulated bees and we'll be doing bee things. So super excited for that. Super excited to talk about to a B expert. I hope. The picture isn't as grim as some people have made it out to be, where the bees are going extinct. And hopefully we can learn some ways of how to be more sustainable, more eco-friendly, and how to rebuild that the population of, of bees. Curious to buzz buzz. I think Colin and I might be color coordinated too, so if you just want to tune in, that's, that's enough reason to tune in right there. Do See if we can hold on to this top three. And then keep on keep an eye out for more games and streams on global change. We're gonna be doing a series all year, so we're gonna be playing some really great games. We're gonna be talking to some interesting people. We're gonna have uh, a web page for it eventually, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, Tune in on Friday at 2 p.m. to see if Colin and I will be color coordinated for BC. Alright. Hey, second place. Not bad. Not bad, shy guy. Let's see, what else do we have? Um, last week we did a really great stream with Feed the Pack. You can find it on some of our recent videos in our, on our Twitch page. Feed the Pack is a really great program here at NC State where volunteers 
collect donations, they go out and buy food and create a food pantry that is accessible to anybody here at NC State, whether you're student, faculty, or staff. The food is free, um, and it's for those in need. Um, food insecurity is a really big issue, especially amongst college students. Food insecurity is a big issue in America in general that doesn't get talked about a lot. I think a lot of people go to bed hungry, and um, that's the definition of being food insecure. It's not so much that you're starving, but you just you don't know where your next meal is coming from. So I talked to some of the volunteers from Feed the Pack and just got some general information about it. Um, if you want to learn how to volunteer, they're always looking for volunteers. They're always looking for help. They, they're open. All you do is scan your ID, and it, it's not to put anything on your record or keep track. It's just to see um, how they can improve the food pantry and make it more accessible and ready for people. So definitely check out that stream. Learned a lot of really great things about Feed the Pack program and just a really great opportunity here on campus. And they have toiletry as well. Yes, it's on bathroom products. Just definitely recommend checking it out. I love this map. I love that it doesn't have laps. You just brace all the way down to the finish. You start at the top of the mountain and go all the way down. Ah! You got different terrain. That's beautiful. Good job. Good job, Nintendo. Yeah, if you're part of a student group or an organization on campus, please reach out to us either in the chat or you can email us. We'd love to talk to you about your organization and what it is that you do. We are going to talk to the Music Empowerment Student Group on campus, which I'm really looking forward to. We might be doing um, a talk slash showcase with Super Ritmo, who is the Latin dance club on campus. They won Best Dance Club on campus before the pandemic, so they got a lot to live up to with their new members. Really excited to talk to them. Uh, we'll be talking to the Study Abroad office in a couple of weeks to learn more about the programs that you can sign up for and what their offices do, how they advise students, what programs you can sign up for. And something I definitely recommend checking out, I spent a year, an academic year in Aarhus, Denmark, studying business when I was an undergrad at SF State, and it was an amazing experience. It was a cold, the coldest winter I've ever experienced, but especially coming from California, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. I met so many great friends that are still all over Europe got to learn about a new culture, and I'd never been out of the country before, so this was an opportunity to go explore the world. And because of the program, it wasn't as expensive as I thought it would be. I thought that that would be, I'd make it inaccessible for me and a lot of my friends, but a lot of us were able to find a program that fit um, our wants and needs. First place. Hey, yo. Yeah, that forest is definitely chaotic. Let's see. Mute City. Mute City for Megan. Thank you for joining us today. We're just relaxing, playing some Mario Kart. I'm talking about some library initiatives and library program spaces and services that we have this semester. Hope you are all having a great start, aren't too swamped with work already, and if you are, at least hopefully it, you had a great three-day weekend. It's the name of the game.
I do want to talk about our access to databases and journals as well. For those of you who can find them on our website, lib.ncsu.edu, um, right on the homepage right there in the big where you search for books. You can hit a tab and search for journals. Um, there's a link right below it that'll take you to specific databases. Our databases range everywhere from all-encompassing, like Summon, where it's kind of like an Amazon warehouse full of databases. You'll find articles on anything from psychology to education, communications, engineering, history, um, lots and lots and lots of different scholarly articles. It's a great place to start. And then as you get further into your research, your paper, your project, you can go into more specific databases that will focus on that topic specifically, like say psychology or engineering. So you won't see things, um, you only see things that you're looking for. It's a great skill to get used to searching for databases and learning how to read scholarly articles. It's free for you out of your tuition, so definitely make use of it. They're not, those articles usually aren't readily available on the internet. Google Scholar has access to some, but you'll have way more access to those in our databases. If your English 101 class comes to the library, we will teach you how to learn those spaces. Um, but if not, you can come to the Ask Us desk and there will be someone who can point you in the right direction. For sure. And like I kind of mentioned earlier, um, learning how to read academic papers, learning how to incorporate them into your own papers is a skill that takes time. So it might be really confusing at first, but the more you do it, the more you'll understand like different patterns and uh, different key components that you're looking for, and you can it'll you'll get better at it as time goes on. Um, I wasn't really aware of it until I went to grad school and started doing my research. And towards the end of my two years, I was an expert in navigating in and out of this. They're called scholarly articles because they're reviewed by a group of their peers. They're usually done by professors doing research at institutions. And the reason that this is important is because these days, especially these days, you can just make a website that looks really professional. You can have an opinion blog um, that people will take as fact. And so what differentiates scholarly articles is that they've been reviewed, they've been accepted into different journals that are respected in their fields. And you can, you can be rest assured that there's been research done. And you can either agree with the info that they're presenting, or you can disagree with it in your own paper. One thing that professors like is when you are arguing for something in your paper, and then you bring up the opposing side's argument, and then defute it or dispute it in your paper. Dispute. notice that it's a little chilly in the library we apologize where they are doing construction on the steam unit and it's just messing with all the temperatures so if you're coming to the library just be aware that it's a little bit colder than normal and to bring a sweater First place. Let's see how long this lasts. Not very long. I don't know, but all the maps. We haven't done Ribbon Road one time. But this map's come up like three times. Um,
first click. First click. In the words of Ricky Bobby, if you're not first, you're last. And I'm about to be last. I held on as long as I could. A cluster of bad luck. Not first. Uh, let's see. I got about 15 more minutes with you. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you're having fun. Uh, I want to give a shout out to our campus community centers. They are back open as well. Our Multicultural Student Affairs, African American Cultural Center, GLPT Center the Women's Center, um, counseling, definitely recommend checking out those places. They're going to be doing a lot of activities, a lot of programs over the year. I know MSA is really excited. They have some new staff members over there as well, and they're going to start off the semester with Latin Heritage Month coming up September 16th. I believe they will be tabling and tally either on the 15th or 16th at noon. Um, there's going to be a mural review reveal at the Pool College of Management in Nelson Hall. There's going to be a mural release on November, um, September 17th. It's a Friday in the afternoon. I will be out there talking to the artists, asking them questions about their inspiration. So definitely come by and check it out. They have a lot of great resources. The African American Cultural Center has um, a library specific to their own materials. They have a podcast. And it's just a great place to meet people and see what's going on. If you ever need help with any of the technology that we learn, or just some of the ideas you have for your projects, you can douse the African American Cultural Center. But yeah, if you ever need help with any of the tech softwares, you can always set up a tech console um, on our website under Study and Learn, request a tech console, fill it out, fill out the form with what it is you're trying to learn. We can help you with anything from podcasting to setting up your GoPro, helping Logic Pro, um, lots and lots of help that you can get here at the libraries. I like this course, but I usually do really bad.
course, it's just a giant circle. Which is from the old video game, Excite Bike. Which I don't think I ever played. It's maybe at the arcade. Oh, this is the third lap already? No way. If you know anybody who's going to be thinking about coming to NC State next year in fall 2022, um, admissions is going to be doing a pack preview event over September and October where they'll be talking about how to get scholarships, how to apply, and just have some experts there for your questions. So if you know anybody who would also like to come to NC State, um, recommend that to them. It's, again, it's called pack preview, and it's being hosted by admissions. Fifth is an awful, it's not bad. Top five. Tech Landing is a little bit different this semester. If you want to check out a DSLR camera or a projector, you're going to do send in a special request on our Tech Landing page, and that way we can clean it, get it ready for you, and then you can just come pick it up. You can check those out for a little bit longer than normal. Um, it depends on our availability and what Tech Landing says. But yeah, if you want to check out some of the more long-term items definitely check out our tech lending page see what you can check out see what's available we have dj equipment we have synthesizers we have lots and lots of cool tech for you to play with if we don't have it uh, recommend us something and we can go ahead and try to get it something that you think people would like to check out i feel like anything revolving around creating content super popular in the court these days. Content is the name of the game. Super Mario Sunshine. Considered a classic by many. Did they remake Sunshine for the Switch? I can't remember. But I, would, I never got a chance to play it. I would like to go back. I've heard the only good things. Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario Galaxy. Um, and I will segue that into, we have a really great video game collection here at the library for our Switches, for PlayStation 4, for Xbox One. And you can find that in our libraries at both libraries at Hunt and Hill. And the Hill it's by where the DVDs are. Ooh, sorry, I just got a bunch of boosts. Uh, but yeah, we, we collect a bunch of games. We took a little break last year, but we'll start to get some of those 20, uh, 2020 games that were really popular on the 2021. We are in line to get PS5s and the new Xboxes, the Series X. So just be patient with us and we'll get those. The video game labs aren't open yet because of the high high touch rate and because of COVID. So we'll get that going pretty soon and hopefully we'll have some new consoles in there. Ooh, Mario All-Stars Limited release with N64 Mario, also a classic. Sunshine and Galaxy. Man, I might need to get that and I will put in a purchase order for us to get that here at the library because that sounds amazing. 
hopefully it's still available. I tried to 100% Mario Odyssey and then just finding all those green stars and the moon levels. I was like, alright, this is enough. Was that what you're saying? Then, oh, of course it did. Thank you, Nintendo. Always there for your fans. Always a comment. Uh, we got about 10 minutes left. Thank you for joining us today. We've had a lot of fun playing Mario Kart with you. And talking about the libraries. Yeah, Odyssey is a is a bear or a beast. For sure. Yeah, we'll be able to find that game. I think right now a lot of the student organizations are looking for members, so definitely check out that page where it lists all the different student groups if you're interested in any of those. Give them an email, give them a shout out, follow them on Instagram. Um, I know we have a lot of great student groups from dance clubs, acapella, there's a Pokemon, Pokemon Go student group. They do a lot of different activities. There's an origami club, video game development club, board game club. So whatever you're into, you'll probably find a group of other students who are into it as well. Skiing, snowboarding, lots of different things. This one's really fun, but I feel like it's super short. There's 700 different clubs, so. Yeah, follow that link, getinvolved.ncsu.edu, and find your folks. Good race. Eight, almost 800 clubs. Yes, I love it. Yeah, just to reiterate, the libraries, we are open. Come on in, study, bring some iced coffee, grab some iced coffee from our coffee shop. We are open 24 hours a day, five days a week. On Friday and Saturday, we close at 10 p.m. and open at 9 in the morning. Um, all the other times, you can just walk in. After 10 p.m., bring your student ID card so you can scan yourself in. I really like that feature because, you know, sometimes you just got to get away from your roommates or if you just want to study super late night and not bother anybody, you can come in and find your own little corner of the library. It's a lot less crowded in the later hours of the night and in the day. And you can just get all of your work done. You can use some of our desktop computers. We have Macs and PCs. We have computers that have specialty softwares like the Adobe Creative Cloud. And if you have any questions at all, you can always come to the Ask Us desk and they will point you in the right direction. We have a terrace. Um, during the day, there is food, not really aside from our coffee shop, but it's it's really close by. It's called the Atrium. Um, you just go outside around the construction, and you'll find like Chick Fil A. There's an Acai smoothie place. Um, there's lots of campus food. So if you're hungry and you're close to the library, that's where you go to find some food. This is gonna be our last race because I gotta go ahead to Hunt Library and get ready for another meeting. It's not gonna be as fun as playing Mario Kart with you. The idea was, I think they're working on the Steam. I'm not really sure actually. Um, I'm not sure exactly what they're doing, but they're putting in a lot of work underneath the brickyard. For those of you who don't know, this is 
uh, DHL library consists of three buildings stitched together over time. And so that's why it's a little wonky on that side. Wonky, but beautiful. Lots of beautiful renovations. We share a space now with the Academic Success Center, with undergraduate research. We have a data experience lab, innovation studio, makerspace. We have a digital media lab, virtual reality lab. <laughs> what if that became our tagline? I don't know if our administrators would like that. DHL Junior, wonky but beautiful. Thank you for playing with us today. This is going to be our last race. Yeah, just for April 1st. I need to let that slide. I wish I was putting up a better performance for our last race, but it is what it is. Again, thank you for joining us, playing Mario Kart. Um, check out our Twitch stream for lots of other really great streams with organizations, learning how to use programs, virtual reality. Thank you, Megan, for moderating. Check out Megan at the VR Lab, doing some really cool things, immersing into different worlds. Um, check out the Ask Us desk. Let me leave this place. Check out the libraries. Um, if you have any questions at all, there's a librarian here to help you. Um, have a great semester, everybody. I'll see you soon.